Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks when using filters in Adobe Workfront reports. So for today's examples, I'll create a task report uh, since that's a very common one. Okay. Filters is really the tab that you want to start on when you're creating Workfront reports. Um, the first tip I will give you is to kind of swing very wide when you are looking for data within Workfront. So if you're wanting to create a, port, a report involving tasks that are within a project for a particular company or multiple companies, um, start there as that will give you kind of the basics of where you need to start. There, of course, as you'll see from the drop downs, a lot of options uh, and a lot of objects that you can pull into a report. So just think about the highest level of data you want to pull. You want to pull a project uh, that is aligned with a particular company. So where you would start there is usually I'll just search project and then company. So you can see other items are going to come up, right? Um, sometimes it will pull the same data like if you went to project company ID uh, and sometimes it won't. Uh, so it's a little bit a little bit tricky. And again, you're going to have, you know, a couple of choices depending on what you're looking for. I would always go with the main object, the project, and then the company ID um, that is under it. And so, um, again, you can choose based on what you're, you're trying to look for. But if you're wanting to look for a specific company, a uh, project of which the tasks that you're looking for are within, you would start here. So we'll just look for one, two, three, corporation. And that's correct. So you're going to pull tasks that are only in projects associated with this company. So next thing to think about is, do I want to pull all of the tasks in those projects? Because right now that's what this will do. So whether they're open or closed, um, you know, whether the project is uh, current or in the past, it will pull everything. So then you kind of want to whittle down from there. So the next thing you want, oh, I only want projects, you know, that aren't completed. So only that are current. So again, I recommend starting with the highest level and what you're looking for is status, right? Is that project in current planning, etc.? So again, you'll see that uh, other custom forms may, may get pulled in as an option here. And then you'll want to look for the most basic one. Uh, so I would, again, go with the highest level there are a lot of very particular options, and many times this isn't going to pull in exactly what you want. It might, <laughs> uh, but again, progress status might pull in something different, but I would go with main status as the object type there. So you would just select status. And then a good one here is you have the options to put equal specifically, but if you have a lot of different status, uh, project status options within your instance of work, right? It might be too much. So you might want to choose is not equal to complete, dead, or on hold. And so that way, anything that still someone may have a project that's open and they flipped it to planning and forgot to flip it back to current. So that way, if you kind of just use isn't equal to these completed ones, you'll pull in everything else and you could always adjust from there. So I would recommend uh, doing that versus trying to pick each particular 
you know, type of open status. So now you're pulling in uh, all tasks associated with this company, but only in um, projects that are that are open that have not been completed uh, or put on hold. So the next thing to think about is your task status, right? Are you wanting to see tasks in this task report that are complete, that are still open, that are in progress, what have you? Um, typically you're running task reports to see, you know, everything that's still open in some way, or you may be running a report to see everything that's been closed out. So we'll run this report looking at everything that's still open in progress, new, et cetera. Um, so now we're looking for the task status. And again, I would recommend going with the, you know, highest level that you could think of because you're going to see a lot depending on uh, what is in your instance, a lot of custom forms. So I would select task status. And again, uh, a lot of times it's easier to just say not equal to complete um, or canceled is a really Good one to select and that way you're going to pull in everything um, that isn't completely closed out even if it's uh, if you have something like a no longer needed in your instance that'll probably show as closed um, and you can select that another option would be to go with task percent complete which might even be easier than the above that I just showed you. So if you select task percent complete and you go with um, is less than 100, so that'll be 100%, then that will catch everything that's open. So just to compare, this is probably much easier to pull in anything that's open, regardless of status, uh, because it has not been fully marked complete. So we'll go with that filter. And so, uh, pretty easy, and you just kind of whittle down to what you're looking for. If you wanted to put a time, then put a time constraint on it, uh, you know, I want to see tasks that are, you know, open in some way, but are only due, um, you know, within, say, the next two weeks. You could also add another filter rule there um, for your planned completion date would be what you would be looking for. So the task planned completion date, which is ultimately the due date, and you can select specifics there. So um, a lot of options, you could just say this week, it'll pull anything for this week. Um, and again, so then it, it fills in the um, the code for you. Uh, you could, you know, do between and select very specific dates if you, you know, if you're running a, a finite report. Uh, I recommend using things like this week um, or this month, anything like that that's going to pull in an update as it goes. So that way, uh, if you're only running, say, this current week between two specific dates, after that point, nothing's going to pull into the task report. So um, what we can do is go with, let's say, this month. So the code that it enters is today, and then the BM is beginning of month. And then it'll read it as today, end of month. So if we're uh, August 24th, it knows, oh, I've got to pull 8 1 um, through the end of August. And so if you're looking for specific dates, you can then further whittle it down from there. So we'll go with this as um, a first pass at pulling in. Uh, all of these tasks for 123 Corp that are still open, um, not complete, and uh, are planned to be completed within the current month. Okay. 
You'll just have to name it before you save it. Save report. Okay, then you'll see there's one task that is due this month that is falling within any one, two, three corporation projects. If you want to see more, of course, you can always go back and edit the report, uh, change up the filter, change the filter dates. Um, what I'll do now, this takes a while to load. Is I'll go back to the filters. I'll just remove the time constraint of the month. So you can easily remove filters, save it and close it. So now it'll pull in, um, uh, everything. Yep. So you can see, uh, there's a three tasks scheduled across all one, two, three court projects. And uh, one was due in August, but the next two are due in September. So it's pulling in everything. All right, and those are just a few tips and tricks on report filters. I'll be doing a couple of more videos on uh, groupings and columns for reports as well. So be sure to like and subscribe.